Hey there Pop-Tarts, thanks for joining me for this little walkthrough of my current art book. Um, I do show some of my art pieces that I do and glimpses of my art book here and there on my Instagram account. If you're not following me on Instagram and you would like to be, I always leave all of my social media links down below for you guys. Um, but I thought today I would just give you a walkthrough of what my current art book actually looks like, what I do in it, um, and what some of the pieces mean and what they mean to me and that kind of thing. Um, I know that there was a really positive response to my art witch video that I did a few months ago anybody that wants to check that out I'll leave the link for that below and it was basically just where I invited you to sit with me while I actually did some art I actually made something and I just talked about the process and just showed you kind of a little behind the scenes of how I get into my groove and how I kind of I don't know combine my art process and my spiritual journey because they are very much combined for me they do meet in the middle they are married and um, a lot of the art that I do, a lot of the, the art that I make and that I spend time on, it is mixed media, it is collage and mixed media work. I don't really work with paint or pencil or anything of that nature. And for the last few years, I'd say for the last on and off for almost the last decade, it has been very focused on um, on womanhood and goddess energy. It's been focused on um, the way that women are presented in the media, the way that I feel about my own relationship with my womanhood. Uh, it's about spirituality. It's about cosmic experience as well. Um, and yeah, I guess it's about it's about transpersonal experience a lot of the time. A lot of my images are images of spiritual experiences taking place. They are about the transpersonal moment where you have an epic download. And they are usually about, you know, those moments and how those moments can be empowering uh, within the context of the divine feminine or within the context of womanhood or my womanhood or leveling up as a woman or whatever. So there is kind of, I suppose, you could say... Uh, a spiritual feminism to what I do with my work um, whether or not it's everybody's cup of tea whether or not it would be every feminist cup of tea is something else but um, I'm really interested in female archetypes I'm really interested in um, goddess energy and that kind of thing so that that does feature very very heavily you're you're rarely gonna find any men or any male presenting people <laughs> in my work um, just just a heads up just FYI okay <laughs> and uh, yeah it is a lot to do with as I said spiritual experience and that kind of stuff and um, having spiritual breakthroughs having spiritual downloads what that feels like uh, my work is also very centered on self-expression it is very throat chakra-esque you will notice as I go through the pages that there are a lot of images of what I like to call ectoplasm um, coming forth from the mouth and that is really about expression and that is also about overflowing with cosmic feeling and spiritual experience and overflowing with emotion as well and just how that comes out into the world and obviously as you guys might have noticed by now I am a talker so a lot of it is to do with the words I say as well a lot of that ectoplasm that I'm drawing from the mouth and stuff is to do with the words that I say um and to do with what they mean and, and whatnot. So yeah, those are the main themes, I suppose you could say, that you're going to see within this book. So this is my main book that I've been using on and off for the last two years. I'm not super prolific with my work, so it still isn't finished yet. It's about halfway done. Um, I'm not someone that does work every single day. So uh, this was actually originally supposed to be a tarot journal. That was what I wanted it for originally, and that's what I made it for a long time ago. I made the image on the front uh, combined from two different images. So I got that print of the moon, and then the model was from a different picture, and I put them together, and I was like, okay, this is going to be my tarot journal. Uh, but that just didn't feel right to me. I wasn't filling it up. I wasn't enjoying the process. So I just pulled the first few pages out of that book and just left them. And, uh, and then I came back to the book a few months later and thought you know what I'm just going to make that into my new art book so yeah I decided to do that so that's what I'm going to be talking you through today but first of all I thought I'd also mention that this is like my little doodle book I won't show you every single page but I do like to doodle I do like to draw patterns and random stuff like that I like to have a little book to just do doodles in um, and little collages and things and that is just really soothing and yeah it's something I can take around with me some of the images like this one for example are more finished and there is a concept to them and then other images are I suppose you know well they're just little doodles they're not really anything nothing came of them um, it's good to have a book like this you know where you can just do whatever takes you fancy and not really worry about what's going to happen what the finished product is going to look like 
it's really important to me for practicing my line work and improving my line work because I do quite a bit of line work in my art uh, this is a mandala I quite like to draw mandalas sometimes they're just super soothing and they relax me um, I like to do tendrils as well I'm really fond of the tendrils you'll, you'll find a good tendril or two always in my doodle books I must say so yeah it's good to have um, a doodle book like this sort of knocking around that you can just do whatever in so I do have that and I, I enjoy working on that so now I'm going to talk you through what is in this uh, big art book so I'll just move my tea out of the way I'm having apple elderflower and pear tea today I'm looking forward to getting into that while I have a chat with you so on the inside cover of my current art book there's like these beautiful old ornate tarot cards I'm not sure what deck they're from um, but they're obviously a leftover from when I had this book as a tarot journal and then on this page this is sort of an abandoned page if you like um, which has been heavily sort of marked through by the felt pen on the other side but basically this was um a, a piece or it was going to be a piece where I had the original print out or the original uh, photo of the model and then a photocopy of the model and I was going to do different things with each of them um, I do this quite often I like to get an original image and then get a photocopy maybe three or four photocopies and do a series where each one of them looks a bit different or has different things going on but clearly I, I decided to abandon that and just moved on to the next page so this is what I mean by line work I do a lot of this kind of line work um, now what I've done here is I've actually cut out the the magazine image I've cut these three parts or these four parts and um, and connected them to the paper and then done the line work around to make it look like she's kind of looking through this webbed sort of netting this like cosmic goo and she's sort of looking through it and I really love her piercing expression I thought that was really beautiful so I had a little go at some line work there and then on the next page you've got this um, figure with some shoes on the ground and obviously like no legs there's like this energy coming from the red shoes and obviously I'm sure you can imagine I was thinking about the story of the red shoes at the time I can't take credit for this particular composition for this idea um, this is just me getting used to the book getting comfortable with the book so I'm not really doing anything too groundbreaking um, so this is actually an image from a magazine that did present like this as far as I can remember like she didn't have any legs and there were red shoes there underneath her so I just took that and uh, enjoyed looking at it and thought it was beautiful so I just put this colour there to make it look a bit more magical and it made me think of the red shoes but it's certainly not um, by any stretch of the imagination something original or something that I did I suppose you could say um, these these two images on the other hand these are obviously heavily edited by my hand <laughs> and this is another example of how I like to take an original image and then do a photocopy of the image whether it's color or black and white um, and then play with the images and make them different even though ultimately they are the same I really really love doing that I love doing a series of things with the same image so that I have the creative freedom to keep customizing and playing with that same initial image that really excites me I think there's something really cool about that so this is Angel Hayes some people might already have recognized that this is the artist known as Angel Hayes I really really love their music I'm really into Angel Hayes check Angel Hayes out if you haven't already if you're not familiar absolutely amazing so so fucking talented really talented individual so this one is obviously more choppy and more ethereal looking and kind of ghostly and then this one is more kind of like a cartoon style a graffiti style I really had fun doing that hair this cartoon hair I really like that it's kind of doll like um, so yeah you've got like the the geometric sort of shapes and stuff and the bubble style so I really like how these two pages turned out I like the colors uh, nothing on the other side because it's bled through um, and as I remember I was working away from home when I did the next page so I didn't have any paper I would normally just um, set a bit of A5 white paper here and work on the back of the page um, but if I'm working away from home or I don't have paper to hand then I'll just leave the page as it is and move on um, so this is very typical of the style that I do this particular piece you've got the what I like to call the ectoplasm coming from both eyes um, you've got the uh, the face coming off from the ectoplasm in this direction with its own rays and that's very common for what I do um, the line work the kind of elaborate twisty turny vines and line work is very common for what I do the little bubbles 
that's all like something I've done for years and years and then you can see I've got a cut out of an eye there coming out in one of the pieces of line work again that's something I really love to do I like to get little pictures and photos and stuff and put them into the line work so that you really feel that there is a density and a texture and a depth to that line work and it starts to feel alive and that is really the way of me I suppose um, symbolizing the raw expression or the raw feeling that is supposed to be coming from the figure it symbolizes the intensity of the experience that the figure is having so I really um, I really enjoyed making this I really love her pompadour wig and the feathers coming out from the pompadour wig and I did make her expression more extreme by going in here with the felt pen and making the shadows more extreme I like to do that sometimes so I really do like that piece um, left a, a page blank again because uh, I was away from home didn't really have any way to make it usable and then here this is a portrait of Jimmy Edgar he's just a very important DJ <laughs> um, so yeah it's, a, it's an image of Jimmy Edgar he's awesome love him to pieces do believe he is a modern chaos magician if you don't know who Jimmy Edgar is check him out on Spotify he's wicked and this was very shortly after I saw him actually play at Phonox with Helena Half, and that was just stupendous so I got really into Jimmy I'm pretty obsessed with Jimmy so this is just a, a portrait of Jimmy it's very rare to find a man in my art books but um, if there was ever going to be a man that would be permitted to gain entry to my art books it would be Jimmy Edgar I am just a little bit obsessed so so, yeah there's Jimmy Edgar with the uh, the diamonds and the rays and stuff and he's having a hell of a transpersonal time there and then here you've got more ectoplasm with the classic face coming out of the side I really love this model I love the green um, eye makeup I thought that's really beautiful and I love the go faster stripes like the sportswear that this model is wearing I really enjoyed that um, I cut this face out from um, a magazine, it was like uh, illustrations and um, yeah I've got some geometric shapes going on in there, I really love that. This face looks like Miley Cyrus but it's not Miley Cyrus, it's just a random person from a magazine but every time I look at it and see it from like now I think that really looks like Miley Cyrus. <laughs> um, but yeah that's not intentional and it's not Miley Cyrus. <laughs> but obviously she's puking an aeroplane so I thought it'd be clever to write travel sickness. Uh, it's just a, a silly little piece really, it's nothing serious. Um, I think I have to take some time to get comfortable in a book and get used to it and feel like I can it sounds weird but feel like I can open up to it a little bit I don't I don't immediately start using a book and going into the deepest darkest themes and exploring things you know of a deeper nature I play around a little bit first and do more light-hearted things first and I would say that that definitely uh, is one of those more light-hearted things I'm um, not really keen on this piece I was trying to work with an ordinary biro um, and it just didn't really work out I like the pink tint that I've done in the hair um, but I'm not really I'm not really bothered about it it's just sort of a scrappy piece I do however love this piece so much I really am keen on this um, I love the colors that I did and uh, the kind of antler vibes coming out the top of the head and the thorns in the line work um, I like these uh, these are what I call balls of yarn you'll see these a few times in this book um, I have got cute little names for the various different elements that I place into my line work and these are my balls of yarn um, and they they represent like the richness and denseness and intensity of experience um, and I think they just look really visually pleasing so but they are intended to look like balls of yarn and this is the actress Clemence, uh, Clemence Posey I don't, I don't know exactly how to pronounce her name I really loved her expression and I loved her messy hair and I wanted to have some things coming out of her messy hair and have this big sort of pagan halo you know and make her look like a goddess of the forest and I feel like I really succeeded it's probably one of my favorite little bits that I've done in this book so far I really like it um, this is just another random scrappy piece I think my intention was to make it into the magician from tarot um, but I feel like I kind of failed in that objective it's way too cluttered it's too messy I've got kind of the eye ectoplasm and the mouth rays as well and uh, I just felt like it was too much so I kind of left it um, and then this is pulled out from one of my um, 
previous art books that I was working in. I really liked it and I wanted to salvage it. I didn't carry on working in that particular art book. I sort of left it, but I really wanted to keep looking at this piece and enjoying this piece because obviously I love that psychedelic trippy halo. And I, I thought I'll miss that trippy halo if it goes. I want to keep it. So I transferred this piece from another book that I no longer work on. Um, so this is where I think things start to get a little bit more serious in this book and I'm playing more with my ordinary style and the themes that I ordinarily go for and letting myself get a little bit deeper. Um, so these two I did on the same day in obviously a very similar style. You've got a very similar style of face, um, a very similar like muted, almost black and white vibe to both of them. Well, this one is black and white and this one is just incredibly pallid with very little colour. Um, I was playing around with, with ideas for the Empress in tarot. Um, can you tell that I'm tentatively on the verge of making an oracle deck or a tarot deck or something? Um, but uh, I think that when I put this on Instagram and I said that it was an Empress image, a few people said that it's far more in keeping with the Queen of Swords, which actually I have to agree because, of course, the line work has that spiky, thorny style. Um, and just her expression is a lot more Queen of Swords than it is Empress. So, But when I was doing these, I was thinking of the Empress. And then this next one, Overleaf. Now, this one is much more, I suppose, what you would think of classically as the Empress. Um, I found this uh, image of a model in a magazine that was very, very floral. It was a super floral shoot. Um, as you can tell, I get a lot of my inspiration and resources from fashion magazines. I have a massive collection of fashion magazines and art magazines, style magazines, that kind of thing. Crafting magazines. I've been collecting them for fucking years. I've got copies of the Face magazine, which doesn't even run anymore. It was a tragedy when they stopped printing that. Uh, I've still got copies of the face under my bed guys seriously I've been a magazine junkie for a very long time which is great because it's very conducive to me now being a collage artist obviously um, but yeah this is much more stereotypically what the empress would look like I don't think I would go for this as an empress image in a tarot deck because as a creator I would just think this was kind of too obvious um I mean, it's not big pregnant lady obvious, but it's still pretty stereotypically Empress-like. So I don't know if I would go for that. I think I'd try and take it a little bit more off the map, but who knows? I don't know what is gonna come through when I make my own deck. So I couldn't say, um, but it probably wouldn't be something as quintessentially Empress-like as this. Um, this is what I call a scrap piece or an abandoned piece. Um, I wasn't really feeling it. I didn't like where it was going. I really liked the fact that I cut the hair into this almost like a Morticia beehive. <laughs> I wanted to make something freaky and goth and um, kind of shocking. And so I cut the hair into that shape and I really enjoyed that. But I didn't like where the line work was going and I didn't like the pen I was working with. So I kind of abandoned that. I like her clavicles as well. I like really big, strong clavicles. And so that was another reason why I wanted to use this. Obviously, I've cut the neck in. Her neck was not that thin originally. Um, and nor do her clavicles go out that far. Like her shoulder was not that sharp. I cut that in deliberately, um, thinking that I was going to do line work maybe out here or whatever. But I scrapped it. I wasn't keen on it. You've got to be you've got to be basically not afraid to scrap stuff, guys, you know. So many people are so precious about the idea of an art book that they just don't start one. And they look at other people's art books and tours of art books and they're like, oh, I really wish, I really wish. But they're so precious about their own that they start and give up immediately or they just don't start at all. And the way I see it is like, it's my book. I want there to be some scrappy things in it. I want there to be some completed pieces and some not so finished pieces. It's okay. And it should be for experimentation. It's not for best, it's for everything. And that's really how I see it. And that's how I get the joy out of keeping an art book. I do not think I would get joy out of it if I was being really precious with it and trying to make everything into a finished piece. I would definitely not get joy out of trying to carry on and soldier on with a piece I wasn't feeling. So like with this piece, if I made myself, if I forced myself through it and made myself carry on, oh, that would just be so shit. I would hate that. You know, I'm not about that at all. I'm really much more about just letting something go if it didn't, you know, if it didn't turn out right, if it turned out a bit shoddy, then just let it go and move on, you know. I love this uh, piece. This is a Chaos Witch. I decided that this was definitely going to be a Chaos Witch um, surrounded by various different KO chambers uh, that she's created. And I don't know, this is like a cross between horns and hair, but I definitely had Chaos Witchery in mind when I made this. I also really love this piece very much. I love her hoopy earrings. 
um it was very random this piece i'm not sure what i was trying to achieve i think i wanted to make her look like a rose surrounded by thorns but i ended up doing these really colorful dots as well around the eye um and just having that eye floating out there with the thorny tendrils coming from it um so it turned out a little bit random but i do like it i think it makes a nice addition to the book okay so i really really love this piece i think this is just crackers um I was definitely not quite in this world when I made this piece and I think it shows. I was thinking about being in an urban environment and how you can feel so disconnected from your surroundings and it's so th those moments of surreality that you experience when you're in the midst of people and clashing energies and suddenly out of nowhere you just think who am I, where am I, what the fuck is going on and it's almost like a temporary madness. I was very much thinking about that when I did this and I really like the addition of the bright yellow highlighter in this um i was drunk when i did this <laughs> and uh i was worried that these jaggedy this jaggedy line work wasn't going to make it through because my hand was not quite steady and i was talking to someone as well i was having a gathering at my place um and uh it went well i like it you know i like those different colors it's something different to bring to the book so i'm pretty keen on that um and i was kind of thinking about the way water turns into ice and i think that gave it its jaggedy sort of look so i really do like that i battled for a long time as to whether or not to put color into this composition uh this composition is actually really not quite finished obviously there's a part here and a part here that haven't been filled in with line work um i really love this particular piece i love how made up the model is i love like the eyelashes and just the dramatic look and i i really like that i kept her hand in here i wanted to keep her hand in there i felt that there was like a defensive powerful stance going on with that hand so um and i like the fact that i had some of the ectoplasm or the cosmic goo if you will coming out of the eyebrow as opposed to the eye um and that was something new i was trying so but it's not really finished i don't think i wouldn't say and then this one on the other side um i intentionally didn't put too much color in that one i do really like that one i love the way these tendrils are coming out from the hair um and these flowers and leaves they're cut out and then obviously this thorny ectoplasm here i really enjoy that um i felt like this is another one of the earlier sort of pagan goddess sort of pagan priestess vibe that i was mentioning this is another sort of one of them where i feel like a garden is growing out of her and that's very much what i wanted to achieve when i started the piece so i undenied about whether or not to put color into the line work there as well but i decided against oh i really like this i wanted to make like a sort of um what kind of call it? like an album cover kind of vibe with this face because I just really love this face. Um, it's just got a really iconic sort of um, look to it. And I just thought, I wonder what I can make out of that. Um, that would look a bit like an iconic album cover. So I've got these hands coming out of the uh, the hair. And this face in the, uh, in the ectoplasm coming from the mouth. I really like that. Uh, now, not to sound too cliche, guys. But this one is definitely um, a portrait of depression. It's definitely supposed to be the the demon of depression, <laughs> and uh, I feel like that went pretty well. I like the grey line work. I think it is Cara Delevingne. I think it's pretty unmistakably Cara. I don't think I was thinking about that when I used her. Uh, there are certain models that I really enjoy that I like working with that i like working with their images um but uh not necessarily kara so much really but she just ended up being depression so yeah it's nothing personal against kara delavine i just wanted to do the demon of depression because i was feeling pretty shit at the time <laughs> and this was when i perked up out of the depression and color came back into my life again in a big way <laughs> um so yeah these two are much more colorful and i think that i was trying to cheer myself up as well and, and just do play with new color combinations the great thing about having an art book is that if you do play with color you can really start to experiment with different colors and see how they make you feel and i really enjoy that so i really like these two pages these are another two of my favorites uh now this one i really like um, I was playing with line work and just being a little bit more messy, uh, taking some of the clippings from her dress and putting it in her hair just to make it feel a bit more surreal and a little bit more trippy. I do like that one, but this one is one of my absolute favourite things in this book. This is one of my favourite pages. I love the expression. I love my balls of yarn. I think I did exceptionally well with my balls of yarn. 
I love the cutouts of the eyes. I've got a really good memory of where I was in my life when I made this piece, how I felt. And I just really, I just really like it. I love this one. OK, so here I was definitely playing with colour because this is such a blue image. It's such a blue, grey, cold image, um, chilly to look at, really. And I wanted to play with having some really red, hot line work in there um, and just messing with temperature. And I think that went really well. I really enjoy this piece. And then this piece is another one of my absolute favourites in the book. I love the expression of this model. I just love her earring. I love her jacket, which I cut into to make it look a little bit more like a strange otherworldly military jacket. And I really love the line work coming out of the shoulders and the back of her head and stuff. Um, and I really love this colour of blue green. That just went really well. I couldn't have asked for that to go better. I love the line work that I did inside her face. I do like that face paint vibe that I did. So yeah, really happy with this one. And this had a lot to do with empowerment. It had a lot to do with reminding myself to feel empowered and be empowered. So it went really well. I really like that one. Um, here, this line work was kind of a different vibe. I was experimenting with the rounded edges and the sort of parasitic looking uh, line work. And I think it went really well. The reason it's so yellow is because if you can see, she's got yellow eyeline, uh, yellow eyeshadow on in the actual image. And that set me off on a journey of playing with a bright yellow Sharpie. So um, that happened. And then this is the model Jordan Dunn, who I really like playing with. I like her image particularly. She's a model that when I see her come up in the magazines, I always think there's so much that I could do with her. Um, so it's a black and white image. Again, I did play with the possibility of colour um, in this particular portrait with Jordan. And then I decided against... Um, I just felt like I'll just leave it as it is. I think it's a bit unfinished. I like the dot work on the starched collar. I do like that vibe um the big stiff 70s collar and obviously she's wearing this really awesome beret so there's something really empowering about her whole stance in this image i kind of wish i'd kept the eyes now um and just allowed the expression or at least half of the expression to come through but never mind the, you live and you learn basically this is another one of my favorite models in the whole wide world i love working with her face it's just very versatile and very um it just looks very beautiful with the line work actually this is adua aboa and she's a london-based fashion model and um she's great actually her story is really great and interesting um i'll put a, an interview with her down below and you'll see why i love her so much but i really liked working with her for this piece and doing the green and everything and then this particular model reminded me of my friend sheila and so i just wanted to do a portrait that reminded me of her because those eyes and it's just very Sheila that she just looks like my friend so I was just like well I'm just gonna try and do a portrait of Sheila from this model kind of thing um, I do wish the line work had gone better I wish I hadn't done this with the lips I wish I'd just left the chin um, to kind of uh, complete the image of the face I don't mind that I went in at the nose but I wish I'd left the chin alone but again you live you learn basically you can't get everything right all the time I had an amazing opportunity with this particular image of Jordan and I fucked it up. I just, I'm really upset with myself. I used the wrong pens. I used the wrong colours. I didn't like it. It just didn't work out right. Um, yeah, not happy with this one at all. I could have done so much more with it. It's such a shame, but uh, never mind. And then this one I really like. This one is an image of the coming of spring. I was just thinking about um, the shitty weather that we were having and just wanting so much for it to be spring already and seeing the, the first little kind of traces of it come through, but then it getting thwarted by storms and, and snow and stuff like that. So this was almost like my scream of frustration, like, come on, let's let the seasons change. I'm stagnating now kind of thing, which is weird for somebody that loves winter. Um, but yeah, um, this is my, this is my, uh, spring is coming kind of uh, picture and then here I decided to play with the idea of summer coming as a kind of uh, twin to the spring is coming picture and I quite like how that worked out I like the sparkly eyeshadow on this uh, on this particular model and that really dreamy blissed out expression as though she's closing her eyes against the hot sun so I thought I'm going to really up the temperature and go in with some red and orange line work here and it went okay it's not the best piece ever but it, it will do and I've just got some bits and pieces there that I'm thinking of working with. 
really like this piece um, I noticed on Instagram when I posted a picture of it that Molly Roberts liked it and I thought that's funny because actually it is kind of Molly Roberts-esque isn't it with that hair and everything so I really do like this piece I like the patterns that I cut out from various art magazines that I put into the background I love these two pages these two pages give me a good feeling you've got all these balls of yarn here and I was really thinking about cosmic experiences, connection with the goddess, etc. And the thing that I particularly like about this one is that I found the word bad. Um, I think it was a tattoo on a different model in a different magazine, but I put it onto her face because it just sort of, yeah, just made me feel like, yeah, 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 made sense. <laughs> Uh, now I'm playing with the more stripped back line work, less colour, um, but more detail. This is a different kind that I've been recently playing with that I really enjoy. Um, it's got a little bit of a, a kind of um, sort of liquidy vibe to it, I suppose, like a viscous liquid kind of vibe. I really like it. I'm playing with it more and more, so I'll see where that goes. And this is more my typical line work, if you will. I've got the kind of frosted tips here, is what I call them. Like, I've got all of these different names for all of the different bits of line work that I do. I've got a bit of smudging there, which was a shame. But I like to think these two come as a pair as well. They do look like a pair, which is cool. And then I think we're pretty much up to speed now. Yeah, so um, these are some of my most recent pieces. I'm playing with florals at the moment, lots of flowers going on with these two pieces. Obviously, this one holding flowers here. Um, and I really just love this so much. Um, I like the Christian Dior strap that I kept in. <laughs> I just think that looks really weird against the rest of it, but not not in an unpleasant way kind of thing and this is just really dreamy i like the hearts i think they give it a bit of an alice in wonderland vibe and i really like this fuchsia pink that i was using i'm a pink person um you know i make no apology for that i like the way i made this all weird and twisted as well this face so yeah i really like that piece and then here's a couple of things i've been working on that i haven't put in yet uh obviously inspired by the Met Gala and the fashion that was going on at the Met Gala. Obviously, as a lot of you guys will know, I'm interested in Catholic iconography. I've got a lot of Catholic bits and pieces on my altar. So it's not like I haven't played with that motif before. It's not like I haven't played with that theme before, but I wanted to come back to it in a really strong way after seeing the outfits at the Met Gala, like all those halos and wings and fucking just super, super Catholic shit. I was just like, yes, I've got to get right back into that. So I started with this image of this singer, her name, actually evades me now I have got it written down somewhere so that I can remember it but at the moment her name is slipping out of my head um, but I started with this image of her because she's looking up to the sky and that made me think instantly of like you know images of saints and stuff looking heavenward and all that jazz and I was uh, that I think this was the initial spark that I needed and I was just like I'm gonna put a massive halo around her so obviously this halo isn't finished yet there's line work that needs to be completed um, that it's not usual for me not to it's sorry it's not usual for me to create a piece where the collage work and the line work don't interact in some way that's the massive failing of this piece and it's what i don't like about it i don't like that i didn't cut in anywhere i didn't have anything coming out of her hair i didn't have anything coming out of her eyes i missed a trick completely and I think it's just because I was so excited about what I was imagining and what I was, you know, wanting to try that I just didn't think. And it was only once I'd actually drawn it all that I was like, oh, no, there hasn't been any interaction between the um, the image and the collage piece, uh, the, the line work and the collage aspect. So I immediately started with um, another model that I'd had cut out for a while that I didn't know what to do with. And I was going through my uh, big bag of stuff that I've cut out and I saw her and thought, she looks right for a halo. So I started working on her. So obviously I've done some line work in her outfit and I've got the halo there drawn, ready for me to attack with line work um, at a later date. So these two come as a nice pairing as well. They both have halos, so it looks kind of cool and I think I will carry on in that vein and do some more stuff with halos so that is basically where my art book finishes at the moment 
thanks for coming on this journey with me and checking out the pages obviously i do have you know a lot of thoughts and feelings about the individual pieces that i haven't gone into otherwise we'd be here forever and some of it's private but i hope you enjoyed looking through the pages anyway and i hope it offers some inspiration if nothing else for you to be less precious and more gung-ho with um keeping art books experimenting in art books and exploring your thoughts and feelings in art books because that's a lot of what i do with my art book i explore my thoughts and feelings i get my emotions out it's a form of release and it's a form of devotion at times as well so yeah hope you enjoyed looking at this guys much love until next time blessed be